Good afternoon, everyone. We will begin in just a minute or two. While we wait for others to join us, please let us know what state you represent and what organization um, you're also representing today. We look forward to your participation. Thank you. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention and the United National Indian Tribal Youth Organization, I would like to welcome you to today's webinar, Youth Action Planning, Developing a Fundraising Plan. My name is Michelle Duhart-Tong, and I'm the Training and Technical Assistance Provider Network Lead for OJJDP's National Training and Technical Assistance Center. I will serve as your moderator and host today. Today's panelists are Jared Massey, who's the Project Support Assistant with the United National Tribal Youth Organization, and Mary Kim Titlaw, who's the Executive Director with Unity. As a moderator and host, I would like to take a few minutes to discuss a few features of Adobe Connect, which will help you maximize your opportunity to participate in today's webinar. To view the bios, photos, handout, and PowerPoint, you can access the documents now in the handouts pod of the webinar dashboard, which is found directly above the public chat. For those of you 
participating in today's webinar as a group. Please take a minute and help us count. Go to the chat window and type in the name of the person registered and the total number of additional people in the room with you today. If you are viewing by yourself, there's no need to type anything at this time. Again, if you're viewing with the larger group, please type in the name of the person registered and the number of additional people joining you today. In approximately 14 business days, you will be able to access this archived event at www.ojjdpou.org. Again, that web address for the OJJDP's online university is www.ojjdpou.org. Throughout today's presentation, there will be an opportunity for Q&A. In the interim, use the chat feature to send your questions as they arise. They will be placed in queue for the panel to respond to later. Additionally, there is one poll question. Please take the opportunity when the poll question is presented to provide feedback. Lastly, you will be provided with a link to take a five-minute online survey about today's presentation. We certainly appreciate your feedback regarding the webinar. This information is used to assist us in the future planning and training. Again, without any further delay, your presenter today is Jared Massey, and your second presenter is Mary Kim Tidlaw. Mary Kim? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. We're going to open in a good way. And I will call on Jared Massey to open us in a good way with a prayer. So could, if you all could bow your head, please, and give reverence, uh, we're going to go into prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, Creator, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us all together through um, the power of social media and through the power of networking, Lord God. And we just thank you for connecting us, Lord God. And we thank you for this informational session that will help benefit us and um, help us with um, better knowledge and understanding to fundraise, Lord God. And I thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives and for every organization, tribe that's represented. We just speak favor amongst them and we just um, ask for your wisdom, guidance, knowledge, and understanding for this afternoon session. And I just carefully give you all the praises, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jared. I appreciate that. We're going to begin today with our webinar, Develop a Fundraising Plan, and this is part of the National Youth Today's Native Leadership Initiative. We're going to start by looking at our webinar objectives. First, we wish to share a framework that helps youth groups or councils develop a fundraising plan. We also will discuss strategies and best practices that will work for your youth group or youth council. And we will explore planning resources that are available online and how other youth councils are raising funds. Let's take a look at the fundraising definition. And this is from Wikipedia. Fundraising, also known as development, is a process of gathering voluntary contributions of money or other resources by requesting donations from individuals, businesses, charitable foundations, or governmental agencies. And now I'd like to ask Jared Massey to share a little bit about uh, his experience with the White Mountain Apache Youth Council and their fundraising efforts. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as one of the founders of the White Mountain Apache Youth Council, um, being that we were not funded by our tribe at the beginning stages of our youth council, we had to find um, ways to fund um, for ourselves. And one of the ways that we were um, able to do so was we were selling pom-poms at basketball games. Um, here in the Southwest, basketball is a religion to many of our, of our people. And so basketball is the core of our reservations, and we focus a lot of our um, community events around basketball. 
And so what we would do is we would sell pom-poms by the bulk. And when you, set, when you buy pom-poms by the bulk, you get a discount. For example, the pom-poms that are shown on the screen, um, we, for 200 of those pom-poms, we paid 60 cents each. So we ordered um, 200 of those. And so what we would do is we would sell those pom-poms for $2 each. So we would, um, we would um, get money um, more than what we put into it. So we would um, profit um, about an additional 200 for what we paid for it. So it was an easy way to sell and um, raise money for our youth councils. And so that was one of the easiest things we had to do. So that is an idea for those youth councils that um, are in the same position. Thank you, Jared. And now we have some quick statistics to share with you. Um, and Americans gave uh, $335.17 billion to charities in 2013. And these were individuals, corporations, foundations, and the state gifts. And we want, if you want to know who they were giving to, um, people were donating 37% to health and human services, 19% to education, 18% to arts and culture, 8% to youth development, 8% to community improvement, 6% to animals, and 3% to the environment. And the source was givelocalamerica.org. And um, the average donation by, by cause was 150 for community improvement, 144 youth development, 132 faith-based, and $84 for animals. And once again, the source was givelocalamerica.org. A woman, the average donated, donations were given by women. So. And Gifts by the hour. Most gifts were given between the times of 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. And 11 a.m. was the peak hour for giving. And once again, the source was givelocalamerica.org. Okay, we're going to go right into the um, fundraising plan. This afternoon, um, for successful um, ways to fundraise for a large amount, you're going to need strategic efforts involving careful planning and coordination. It also requires, requires the building and nurturing of ongoing donor relationships. Successful fundraising is relational and personal in nature. The more your fundraising efforts focus on building personal relationships, the more successful you will be. This source will guide you your youth steering committee through a 10-step process of developing a strategic and sustainable fundraising plan that is based on the following ideas. Create a fundraising subcommittee, establish fundraising goals, examine fundraising history, identify and prioritize funding, select fundraising strategies, create organizational support systems, determine and assign tasks, implement plans, follow up and communicate with donors, evaluate, and keep going. We now have a poll question. And we are very interested in learning how you all raise money, or if you've had experience raising money. So if you could uh, select how you've raised money in the past, that would be awesome. So it looks like um, there's a wide variety of 
fundraising uh, efforts. And not surprisingly, the fry bread or food sale is a very popular way. Okay, and the next highest is um, the raffle, and also new to fundraising. So thank you for participating in our poll. We will go into the first step of um, fundraising, and the first step is create a fundraising subcommittee. For my fundraising subcommittee within your youth council. The subcommittee should be comprised of five to ten people who have the time and commitment to make your fundraising effort successful. Choose a chairperson or two co-chairpersons to coordinate the committee's efforts. Look for committee members with a variety of skills. For one, writing, writing letters and proposals, designing presentations, organizing activities, and asking for donations. Also look for several adult committee members, such as parents and volunteers, to act as advisors. Seek adults who can, who, who can bring a, a range of experience and perspective to your project, and who have connections that may help you achieve your goals. Step two, establish fundraising goals. Determine what it will cost to fulfill your needs. If you are raising money to attend the National Unity Conference, for example, it's important to determine the total cost to send the entire group. So you want to establish fundraising goals and deadlines, and of course there's coordination and collaboration. Let's take a look at this budget to send 10 people to the National Unity Conference. This is an estimate. You'll see the cost for hotel rooms, registrations, airfare baggage, per diem, and other costs, such as airport transportation. If you add all of these numbers up, that total cost will come to $11,000 $700. Now, here's where collaboration and coordination will make a difference. Once you have determined a group goal, you will have to determine whether individual members can set personal goals. And if you look at this chart, we have four members of a youth council who have individual goals. Their purpose is for $100 to cover their airfare. So their goal is $400, and they each individually have a deadline of May 30 to come up with that estimate. You can also use a similar chart for the cumulative fundraising efforts and keep track and have deadlines leading up to March 30th. So as you can see, Shaniqua raised $150 uh, by February 20th. Barry raised $75. Candice raised $50. If you move to the March 20th goal, you can see that they um, raised a little bit more. So you add up of the total goal at the bottom and, the, and then the actual amount raised until you reach your goal. Step three, examine fundraising history. By examining the past fundraising performance of your group, you can help make your future efforts more successful. Use the criteria below to evaluate the five most successful fundraising strategies that your group has utilized in the past. If your group has not fundraised before, ask the members to share information about fundraisers they have been involved with. Fill in the chart like the table C with this information.
You can also use this process to evaluate the same fundraiser if held more than once. So if you'll take a look at what one youth council did, for example, they put on benefit concerts for four years, starting in 2010. And they filled in this chart to specify how much money was raised, minus expenses, and how much they netted, the number of volunteers they needed, time invested, and the PR education value was determined. And they answered whether the effort was worth repeating. So it looks like 2010, 2011, and 2012, um, they determined that it was not worth repeating. However, they repeated it in 2014 and um, really did well. Step four, identify and prioritize funding. Prospects can be individual donors, groups of people such as faculty or parents or organizations such as churches, foundations, businesses, or civic clubs. Of course, it's very important to start with people or groups with whom your members already have relationships. So Table D is a prospect list for individuals. This chart will be important to determine who your potential source may be and um, how much you may need from the potential source. So for instance, if you instance, if you look at parents uh, as a potential source, they are good for about a hundred bucks. However, if you go further into the chart, they have a connection and who is that connection to? The employer may be able to match those funds and the end result being $200. And you also want to make sure that you record if they've given before. So on this chart you have parents, local businesses, politicians, tribal lobbyists, and tribal attorneys. It'll be up to each youth group or individual to fill in the chart as it relates to your community. Table E, prospect list for full group monetary donations. You will want to do something similar uh, for the whole group. The previous chart was primarily for individuals. So this chart the entire group will look at prospects. The tribe could be a prospect that may be able to provide $3,000. And have they given before? No. Parents, friends, relatives could also be a prospect um, with a goal of $2,000. Again, uh, tribal attorney is listed as a prospect for $500. His connection would be to other attorneys who could also provide a donation. Table F, prospect list for full group in-kind donations. It's important to pursue potential funders not only for cash, but also for in-kind donations. So in this chart, you'll list each group member, who they know, who that person is connected to, and what the prospect might be able to donate. So we encourage uh, all groups to look at prospects such as the local newspaper, airlines, uh, local businesses, and what they might be able to contribute perhaps to, let's say, a raffle. Step five, select fundraising strategy. Your fundraising subcommittee now has a list of top priority um, monetary prospects and in-kind prospects. In the future, plan to have members approach in-kind prospects as needed by phone, letter, or in person. Put them aside for the time being, though, and focus on your monetary prospects for the remainder of this process. For monetary prospects, there are a number of different fundraising strategies you can use. 
And it's important to use the most efficient approach for each prospect. Remember that the more personal and relationship the approach is, the more likely you, all, you will be to be successful. For example, handwritten letters to family members will typically be more effective than a general letter sent out in a newsletter. Refer to the fundraising strategy source for ideas. So table G is income sources and fundraising strategy. And this chart is good to track uh, your prospect fundraising strategy, specific fundraiser, the date that you will hold this fundraiser, uh, expected net income, actual net income, people required, and people hours. Thank you, Jared and Mary Kim. There are a few questions that have come through um, that we'll ask. We'll just take another minute or two because we're already halfway into the presentation. But what has been your most successful fundraising effort? What is it that you did, and why was it so successful? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I can speak uh, as a Youth Council advisor because I've had experience working with the San Carlos Apache Youth Council. And I will have to say that the best uh, fundraising effort was letter writing. And I'll give you an example. Um, I challenged our Youth Council members to think of potential prospects who could give significant amounts of dollars. They identify three or four, and the letters were written and signed by the officers of the Youth Council. Um, the people that they targeted included a, a politician, the tribal attorney, and the tribal lobbyist. And the, uh, the response was very good. The amount raised from just three letters and three stamps was uh, $2,500. So that was the most successful effort. I have also participated in a food sale, and that was a three-day effort. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was great bonding. And, um, meeting people in the community, so lots of good PR value, but the end result was about $600. Thank you for that. That's, that's very good. We've, we've also seen some of the, uh, the participants chat some successful fundraising efforts that they have um, also experiencing, experienced as well, um, such as hat day at school, dress down day. So I really like some of these creative ideas that get young people involved and uh, more aware about some of the social issues that are going on in your community. One other question that I have, what key task or step have you discovered is key to fundraising? So what is that key thing that you should consistently do that really helps to propel you or to help you meet your objectives? Action planning is very important, and we're going to be getting to that in a little bit. But uh, I know that we've had a past webinar on action planning. So going through the same process, and for those of you that have participated in past webinars, you may recall some of the steps in action planning. Um, a lot of what we're describing today involves action planning, such as identifying prospects and setting fundraising goals and deadlines, and, um, and then do the follow-up and evaluation. So 
Um, it's really, you know, a lot of brainstorming, and it may seem like a lot of work at the beginning, but once you have the tables and charts and start completing them, it really shouldn't take a lot of effort. Okay, that's a nice reminder to um, let everybody know that fundraising is not something that you do overnight. There are key steps, a lot of action steps and planning that goes on in advance, which leads us to the third and final question for this segment, Mary Kim or Jared. How early should one begin their fundraising efforts? As early as possible. That's, that's going to be important because when you're down to the last minute, that creates um, unnecessary stress for um, all of those involved. For those who are uh, planning to attend the National Unity Conference, many of the youth councils or individuals start planning a year in advance. Many of them know that it's going to take a, quite a bit of time and effort to raise, let's say, uh, the example we gave, to send 10 people to the Unity Conference. So they know that they have 12 months to raise $11,700. So, if, if that's the goal, it may take a lot you know, longer. However, if you're fundraising and need only $500 for a youth project, it may not take 12 months. So that's really up to each um, youth council or individual to determine their, their needs and goals. Very good. Thank you so much. Now, if anyone in the um, audience has a question for the presenters, please just chat your question in the chat window, and during our next Q&A segment, we will address your question. Okay, let's move to the next segment. Thank you, Mary Kim and Jared. You bet. Uh, step six, create organizational support systems. Before you implement your goals and strategies, you need to determine the organizational support system um, your group will need to be successful. Consider the following. Does your fundraising subcommittee have enough members? Have you written a case statement that you can present to donor, donors and also use to educate your members? A case statement should include information about the following. The need you are addressing, which is the need of the um, youth leadership develop, your goals for addressing the need, why youth council activities are a solution to the problem, and why Unity Conference are important to your youth council. Return on investment. If the donor makes an investment in a Unity Youth Council, what positive outcomes will result from the partner family, youth, and community? Rational for support. Why should the donor give? So it's going to be important that you remember all of these um, when, when you're in your subcommittee. So donor tracking. This is a chart for tracking each of the donations that come in. So you'll want to make sure that you have the donor information, address, and phone number, the date the donor gave money, the amount they gave, and the date a thank you note was sent. And then any notes, how you may have met the donor and whether they've been added to the mailing list. And this chart is going to be important for um, your youth council as they develop an annual donor giving list. So this chart is very important. Determine and assign task. This is where the action planning comes in. Plan each fundraising strategy in detail, scheduling the tasks required to complete each one. If you will be spending money to implement a fundraising strategy, carefully calculate your budget in advance. Here's a tip. Fundraising strategies include things like grants, letter writing campaigns, direct requests for donations, special events, contacts, contests, excuse me, etc. Remember when you're planning every fundraising strategy, you should always seek to inspire donors by educating them about your youth council and about the challenging goals your group is trying to accomplish. And this is something that Unity does almost on a daily basis. We are talking to a lot of people about Unity, Unity's mission, and the young people that Unity serves. Be sure to capture donor contact information so that you can thank them 
afterward and also keep them informed about your group's activities and accomplishments. So while you're sending a thank you letter, you may want to include a list of activities that the Youth Council is involved in or any goals for the future. Lastly, inform your group of your individual fundraising efforts before planning and implementation, not afterwards. And this is very important as individuals fundraise so that they're not duplicating efforts and contacting the same donor twice. And here is an action planning chart. This includes the name of your group, what type of fundraiser you're doing, who's going to be the leader, and who's going to be part of the team, your goal, and your deadline. In this fundraising activity, there were a number of individuals who wrote down their tasks. A couple of them are listed here. One of them is planning the dinner. The action steps were to set a date, choose a location, and contract with caterers. They assigned people to it. They had a start date and an end date. They planned the program. And those action steps included ordering equipment, tables, tablecloths, chairs, etc., developing a schedule, and inviting guests. Again, they assigned people to those tasks and had a start date and an end date. Table J, expenses and income. You'll want to uh, ex compare your expenses to uh, how much money is raised. And this is the table that will help you do that. So in this chart, you will see that some of the items that were included in the expenses included camera, uh, film, developing. This must have been an old camera, so it's not digital. <laughs> Uh, food, string quartet, print program, and then your total expenses. So there's an estimate on the cost and then the actual cost. The source for income included pledge donations, raffle, and silent auction. They estimated the amount that they would raise from these activities and then they produce the actual amount. So they estimated they would raise $5,500, and that's what they actually raised. Step A, implement plan. It's, going, it's important to put your plans into action and start raising money. Remember the following. Keep records of all communications, activities, donors, and documents. Make sure your entire group is aware of your goals and fundraising activities. Educate your members so that they can communicate clearly with donors. All members should be able to accurately answer questions both about your youth council and unity. The leader is responsible for making sure that all tasks are being accomplished on schedule. Follow up regularly with those responsible for tasks without micromanaging. Keep your affiliated information about your progress. So step nine is one of the most important steps. This is where you want to make sure that your donors know how much you appreciate them. So you want to thank your donors within 72 hours. You want to keep your donors in the loop and you want to consider creative ways to thank generous donors in addition to a thank you note. For example, you could have a plaque made or send a t-shirt. And there is an example of the back of a t-shirt uh, sponsored by Unity. And this was actually a t-shirt that was produced last year. Uh, it was for me, the executive director, because I ran in a marathon and raised money through the marathon. And these are, um, this is a list of all the people who donated uh, for each mile that I ran. And I will tell you that this fundraiser was actually quite successful. Um, I was able to raise more than $10,000 uh, by running a marathon. And I know that, that running isn't for everyone, 
but in this case, it uh, worked out to Unity's benefit. I'm sure some of you can come up with some other creative ways to uh, thank your donors. Uh, one of the effective ways that we found on behalf of Unity is to have a thank you card signed by all the members of our executive committee. And I know donors appreciate um, hearing from the young people as that's who the money benefits. Step 10, evaluate and keep going. After each fundraiser, use the process outlined in step two to evaluate the fundraiser and decide if it should be repeated in the future. Be sure to clearly document your thoughts for future use. Note successes in areas of improvement. We also have a chart from a previous webinar for action planning that you can also use to evaluate your project. And this could be a fundraising effort. So as you can see, it includes project name, project objective, dates, accomplishments, and then a way for you to evaluate um, your objectives. How many people were involved, the volunteers, was a project completed with an established budget, and this is an important one, suggestions for improving the project. And of course, this will come with a wrap-up meeting or debriefing about your event and any additional comments. And this can be used uh, when you plan your future fundraising event. We looked online to find some fundraising resources for you. And on this page, we have a givefoward.com, givelocalamerica.org, and we wanted to make a special notation that there is a crowdfunding day scheduled for May 5th, 2015. And you'll want to go to that website to find out more information. There's also fundraiserinsight.org, and this website has a lot of great ideas, some creative ideas to schedule and um, produce fundraisers that you may not have thought of. And then pta.org. There's a lot of other great ones out there, so if you uh, want to do a web search uh, under fundraiser, there will be a lot of great resources for you to tap into. Thank you, Mary Kim and Jared, again for that segment. Lots of great information. And um, just one or two questions here. Someone asked, Specifically, what are the case statement items to follow? There was some reference to case statement. So what are those items to follow? And perhaps the person that asked the question can um, provide some clarity uh, about what she's asking. Um, again, what are the case statement items to follow? And while that person is um, maybe typing in some uh, clarification around that question, I've got another question for you. Um, you. You spent some time talking about donor thank yous and um, how important they are. And you specifically mentioned a letter. And then later you mentioned uh, that you had a card that was signed by members of your executive committee. In today's climate where they're particularly working with young people where they're texting and emailing, what's the appropriate culture actually for um, post-fundraising efforts and around thank yous? Well, I will tell you that Unity does this in a variety of ways. And um, of course, we're a nonprofit organization, so 
um, we are able to do a lot more than perhaps a local youth council. But some of the things that we do um, to thank our donors, and those of you that attend the National Unity Conference may see some of this. Uh, when we have our conference, we have a big screen where we may post their logo, and we also have verbal recognition during the event. So you can also, of course, make your donor feel good if they're in the audience and pointing them out. Uh, Post-event, uh, we have um, not only sent a thank you note, but we've also included a thank you on our website. So if you have the means to thank them, say, via social media, I think that would be another great way to do that. Jared, do you have some other thoughts? Uh, I would have to agree with social media. Um, coming from a youth um, viewpoint, um, one way that we tend to recognize people on social media is just simply doing a post about them, um, which would include a picture of them or uh, their logo, and we would just write how they have benefited, how you benefit from them. And that um, seems to be um, the best way that I've been able to thank people that have donated to me, because um, many times I don't have their email, and most likely youth don't have a database of emails on hand. So the best way is to tag that person on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and just let them know how, um, how much they're appreciated. And going back to the case statement, um, if that's okay, uh, I, I understand, um, I, I believe, the question. And really that boils down to important facts about your youth group. Uh, we have a fact sheet that we send out when we do fundraising for Unity. So the case statement could include, how does this organization or youth council help people? Who do we help? What vital services do we offer? What is our organization or youth council's track record? What are our plans for the future? How do we use the money raised? And why do we deserve your support? So those are all you know, good pieces of information. Thank you, Mary Kim. Good information, and thanks for um, going back to the case statement question. So another question that's been asked is around GoFundMe. Um, has Unity actually you utilized GoFundMe, or have you explored this option? Or are you planning to use it? What are your thoughts? Well, GoFundMe is a great opportunity. Uh, Unity has not utilized this uh, opportunity. However, we have used other online fundraising strategies. And I will tell you that we have not had a lot of success with it. But that's not to say it won't be successful on your end. I think that we have to learn how to better promote our efforts. And if we choose to go uh, with a GoFundMe account, um, we would have to study um, the proper strategies. Jarrett, do you have any ideas on that, or have you utilized it yourself? I haven't used GoFundMe, but um, like Mary Kim said, we, I've used a different online um, portal, I guess you could say. Um, with my current trip to Macedonia, we've given the option, or I've given the option of um, possible donors to donate via online, but that hasn't been successful um, as well. I'm not sure what the issue may be, but with my fundraising efforts, um, I've been able to reach people that um, I normally didn't reach on email, so the people on Facebook were um, more reachable than the people that I emailed. And so the people that have donated to me are people from Facebook, and the people that I emailed um, haven't donated. So it, it's, it's interesting. Um, I'm still trying to find out how I could um, better use social media for uh, my benefit in the upcoming trip. So um, it varies. Okay, thank you so much, Jared and Mary Kim. Another question for you, and it's also something I'd like the audience to respond to. Um, more and more we're trying to engage, and some of you are doing this very successfully young people in our efforts, whether it be fundraising or helping with evaluation efforts or helping doing some social justice work in the community. 
how are you all using your young people to help you fundraise? Why don't you chat out ways that you've used young people to help you in your fundraising efforts? Share with the world what you're doing that's creative. Maybe it might encourage other folks to do more with young people and help them engage. So Mary Kim and Jared, why don't you respond to that? And then we'll watch the chat window as it hopefully lights up with other people sharing us with us some of the ideas and ways they're using young people. How is Unity using young people for fundraising efforts? Well, young people are vital to our fundraising efforts. There are a number of ways that young people have uh, played a role in our efforts. And one of those ways is face-to-face uh, -face, uh, interviews or presentations, whatever you want to call them, you know, that one-on-one -on -one, uh, exchange. So young people have honed their uh, pitch, which, you know, what I tell people is make sure you have an elevator uh, speech ready to go when you're talking about unity. And sometimes unity can be hard to talk about because unity is so many things to so many people. But if you had 30 seconds to describe unity, how would you describe that? So young people have played a role because they talk about their personal experiences, about how unity has helped them. So testimonials are really important, whether it's in person or if we profile somebody on our unity website, um, that they're talking about how unity has impacted their lives. Excellent. Jared, do you want to add anything else to that? Maybe plans you all have to use young people in some new and exciting ways in the future? Um, one thing that I have, I've noticed was that when a few simple words will get um, donors' attention. I know when speaking about unity, one phrase um, which is very accurate is unity saved my life. You know, that's one thing I say when I approach people and tell them about unity or pitch something because, um, you know, that's the role of unity has been in my life. It, it, it really did save my life. You know, that, those few words would go a long way. And, you know, being that I'm fundraising um, myself, you know, I'm learning these different ways and these different strategies um, alongside other youth councils and alongside other youth. Um, and so um, it's very, it could be very challenging, but when your priorities are in order, um, uh, the task could be accomplished. And um, I know one thing that I've been doing, or I'm, I'm doing every Monday until my trip to Macedonia is doing a Macedonia Monday. And what that is is just simply telling my social media friends um, about Macedonia or something that I've done um, that will prepare me for Macedonia. And so things like that, so um, letting people know that you're going on this trip will possibly spark something in them to donate. Thank you for that, Jared. Now, one of the things I'm not seeing in the chat window, I haven't seen one person, and maybe it's just too obvious, who said, we're using our young people to help us get the word out with the social media. Um, maybe that's obvious. Maybe you're all doing that. How many of you are using your young people with your social media, um, whether it be public, you know, present making presentations or um, using your Facebook, or perhaps you've got a, um, a blog? I, I know that young people are doing great things with blogs these days. Part of the challenge is just getting the information out, letting people know that you exist. Um, letting people know how they can support your efforts. So let us know what you're doing around the social media piece. Um, Mary Kim, Jared, do you want to address that? And for, uh, for those of you in our audience, let us know if you're actually using your young people for social media and how are you doing that? Absolutely. Social media plays a big role in raising Unity's profile, not only with the youth, but with the general public. We have seen a significant increase in visits to Unity's website, and I believe it's a result of the marketing that we've done and our young people have done over social media. And I think a lot of it has to do with our creative young minds. And uh, Jared Massey and Natani Hatafli in particular, who we've um, looked to to help us really build our presence on social media. So our young people have some really great ideas, like hashtag campaigns, 
to get the word out there. And Jared may be able to add a little bit more to that. Um, one thing that has been successful for Unity is providing youth with an incentive, um, giving them something to work towards. For example, um, Unity, um, we just use the resources that we have in-house and in we created a hashtag campaign, which was Unity mid-year 2015. So what that was was we challenged youth to make a sign that said hashtag Unity mid-year 2015 and send it to us. And we would post it on our um, website in our social media and the pictures that received the most likes received um, an incentive that gave youth exposure to other youth um, affiliated with Unity. And it helped us um, to reach youth that we couldn't reach before through that one youth and through this particular youth. And so um, providing an incentive will be key. It could be anything from soda to like food. Food is a huge incentive for college students. Um, speaking. Uh, from experience, that's one of the main things that draws me when it comes to um, um, things like that. I also want to touch on something else, uh, Michelle, and that is to challenge our uh, young people and our advisors to do an exercise at their next meeting. And that exercise would to be to have people pair up and to do one-minute pitches. Uh, this would be a fundraising pitch. So you will be, I think, you know, interested in learning how much um, people are afraid to ask for money. So this is a good exercise and help, will help people get out of, um, you know, those uh, butterflies or not having those butterflies when they approach people. It's not the easiest thing to do to ask for money. But if you have um, practice sessions or conduct these exercises, then I think people will get a little bit more comfortable. And it's really important that you are able to express your case statement within one minute. So that would be my challenge to the youth councils and individuals. OK, there are two challenges on the floor. I've challenged everyone by asking the question, how many of you have a young person sitting next to you? What a great opportunity for you all to sit and listen to something that's just one hour. We're about to wrap up. Learn something together. Impart new information to them. Perhaps they're going to have a brainstorming moment as well. And then um, Mary Kim just issued another challenge around the case statement. So awesome. You've got two challenges there. Also, I'd like you to pay it forward. Keep in mind that this webinar will be archived in about two weeks. And you will be able to access it again and maybe pay it forward and share, sit down and share your thoughts with somebody that wasn't with you today at www.ojjdpou.org. That's OJJDP's online university. And there you'll be able to access the archive in about 14 days. We only have about three to four minutes left. And I want to give Unity an opportunity to talk about their upcoming events. So um, Jared, Mary Kim, what are the upcoming events? Okay, thank you, Michelle. We have several upcoming events. The first one is coming up real quick in April, April 10th through the 12th. We're going to have a Today's Native Leaders Community Service Academy, and this will occur in Rapid City, South Dakota. You can go online to unityinc.org to find out more information or call our office. The phone number is at the bottom of the graphic and ask for Lynn Ann Yazzie. We also will be having our Today's Native Leaders National Youth Summit on July 9, 2015 in Washington, D.C., and that's one day before the National Unity Conference. And of course, our Unity Conference, July 10th through the 14th in Washington, D.C. at the Renaissance Capitol Hill. You'll want to start registering for that online or uh, also book your hotel reservations. We do have early bird um, registration deadlines, and the first one is coming up pretty quick in two days. Um, to, February the 28th, it's $185, and after that, it will go up. We also have another Today's Native Leaders Regional Training in November in Spokane, Washington. If you have questions on any of these items, again, you can call our office and ask for Lynn Ann Yazzie. OK, I think Mary Kim worked hard to get all that in in two minutes. <laughs> nice job. You 